Okay, screw it. I, I started this recording now 10 times. This is my very first YouTube video. I'm incredibly nervous. Um, but I just said, you know, this is now my last recording. I'm going to publish this, whatever. Um, what I have here in front of me is the moving average of Bitcoin. I did some back testing and tried to find out are moving averages actually working? So if you buy according to moving averages, when the price is above the moving average, um, would you outperform when you then decide to sell when the price goes below the moving average? So in other words, can you just use the moving average as a buy and sell signal and outperform hodling and avoid all the stress that comes with a bear market, but enjoy all the gains that come with the bull market? And if so, if you compare different moving averages, what's the best one, right? If we have like the 180 days or the 90 days or the, the 30 days, is there any moving average that at least historically speaking would have worked the best? And so I made this analysis and I make this video to share this with you. And I hope you find this interesting. Um, so let's dive into this. This is the result for the 360 day moving average. Um, the strategy looks just at the daily closes. So when the price goes above or below the moving average within the day, that, that doesn't matter. So we're just looking at daily closes. And uh, what you can see pretty nicely here is when the price went below the moving average, our strategy basically went flat. We went completely in cash. So that's the gray line. And the white reference line here is the, uh, the Bitcoin price and the moving average. In this case, the 360 day is what you see here in uh, pink, purple. So what's interesting here is you see the performance, the end performance of this strategy is very similar to just buying and holding. Um, but we do seem to get less headaches in terms of bear markets. We don't take the whole bear market. We kind of exit a little bit before the really bad trough comes. And so we get the same performance without being invested all the time when times are tough. And that's already pretty good, right? We get the same end performance, but we, we, we don't follow the bad times. And so let's look now at the results of the other moving averages. So, so I've also checked the 270 days um, and I flicked through this now a bit quicker. Uh, 180 days, uh, 90 days, uh, 60 days, 30 days. So interestingly enough, for all of those moving averages, when you buy when the price is above and when you are in completely in cash when the price is below, the end result, the, the, the end performance is very close to just hodling all the way through. So it seems to kind of like not really matter what moving average you pick. But on the other hand, what's also very interesting is you're not invested all the time, right? You're maybe invested only 50% of the time. I haven't checked at the number. I can look it up later. But maybe you're like 50 or 60% invested overall, but you still get the same return. So it seems like the moving average is good at predicting this is now the time where on average Bitcoin creates the return. And when the price is below the moving average, it doesn't necessarily mean that this is the time where we're going to lose a lot of money. It just means the expected value now is kind of like neutral. We, we expect the price maybe to fall a bit, then go up again. So we meet the moving average again. Um, but shorting during this time is probably not a good idea. I think in general, it's probably not a good idea to short Bitcoin anyways, because it's just going up so much. So whenever you're in a short position, you're basically battling time and you're battling the, you're battling the overall trend. So I wouldn't go short in, in, in Bitcoin at all. Um, but also just based on this data here, we can see uh, at least those signals here, they're not good enough to go short. They're just like neutral because when we are invested, sometimes we get the same return and the days we are not invested, we basically don't lose anything. So I didn't stop there. 
I went further and here comes something very interesting. Uh, the 14 and the seven day moving average strategy. Look at the seven day moving average return, right? It is way better than Bitcoin. It outperforms basically almost by an order of magnitude. Um, and the drops are way lower, right? There's, there's not so much volatility. It seems to really increase pretty steadily. And th so, so that's good. So it seems like the seven day moving average has a really good predictive power of where Bitcoin might be heading. And uh, here's an overview of all those uh, returns. So the seven day is the best. Buy and hold, interestingly enough, is the worst. And there's also a chart here about the maximum drawdown. Again, seven day is the best. Buy and hold with a maximum drawdown from peak to trough of 85% is the worst. So that's super astonishing, isn't it? Like a simple indicator such as the moving average can already outperform buying and holding. Okay, so, so when we now look at this, right, we see, okay, from, from 30 day to 360 day moving average, we kind of like have the same performance to buying and holding. We have a little bit less of a drawdown around 70%. They're all very similar. So it seems like it doesn't matter if you take the 30 day or the 360 day. It's kind of like your own preference, whatever your trading style is. Just take that moving average and the, predict the predictability power of that moving average is pretty much the same across the board, whatever you pick, at least in this in this range. Um, but when you just look now at, at this chart, like at the return and at the maximum drawdown, you might think, okay, probably the shorter we go with this duration, the better. So let's look at six and five and four and three and two day moving average returns. So I zoomed in, I did exactly that. Here you see now, the returns from two day to 14 day moving average. What can we see? We kind of randomly picked already the winner out of those. The seven day moving average is the best. So the same holds by the way, also for the maximum drawdown. So what can we, what can we conclude from this analysis? Uh, pick your moving average. Um, it doesn't really matter if it's 30 or 360 day, they're all the same. They all work. They all are predictive in a way that when the price is above, this is a time to be in the market. And they are all predictive in a way when the price is below, this is a time where the market is kind of neutral. It doesn't make any money, but it also in the end doesn't lose any. Um, and when you go into fine tuning of say your longer term trades and, and, and you want to figure out when is the exact day that I should exit or that I should enter, maybe the seven day moving average is a good uh, indicator for you to, to fine tune this, right? Just trading by the seven day moving average is probably not a good idea because of fees and this simulation, the spec testing doesn't have any fees included in it, no bit aspect, no nothing. Um, but just as, as, a, as a gauge to, okay, this is, uh, I, I'm kind of considering to maybe exit now, but I still want to ride the wave and I don't know really when to exit. Uh, just look at the seven day moving average and just sell whenever that breaks. And you should be, historically speaking, at least on a relatively good side. So yeah, that's it uh, from this video. That's my analysis. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, please like it. Uh, if you want to see more like this, please also comment what I can do better. This is my very first uh, YouTube video. So any comment is more than welcome. And um, yeah, see you next time. Bye.